Hi, my name is Andrea Couper, and you're watching Mission Nonprofit. Each month, we connect with local organizations and agencies that are making a positive impact in our communities. Today, we're talking with Katie Rains from Garden Raised Bounty, better known as Grub, to learn about their work in supporting sustainable agriculture and food justice. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Andrea. So tell me, what is, what is it about that lowercase u? Great question. We often hear folks say it's Garden Raised Urban Bounty, but that's not the case. So um, we serve rural and urban parts of the county, but we often say it wouldn't be grub without you. That's cute. I like that. We're pretty cheesy. <laughs> so tell us about grub. So our mission in the simplest words is that we grow healthy food, people, and community. Um, the slightly longer version of that is that we partner with young people, people with limited incomes, veterans, and other marginalized communities to help offer tools and resources to build a just and sustainable food system, and that ultimately we're working to inspire positive personal and community change. And that's a little bit broad, um, but I'll tell you more about some of the ways that shows up later. Okay, great. Uh, so tell me more about food justice, and for those that are watching, um, in a broad sense, what does that mean? Great question. So food, the food system, we'll talk about systems a little bit. The uh, food system is kind of at the nexus of education, learning what to put in our bodies, how our bodies work, what we need to feel well, um, connects to health systems. The, our food, um, especially in the US and in Western countries, has a huge impact on our health and well-being. Um, and then also um, economies. So food can be really expensive. In many countries, it's more than half of your, your wages go into food. So we work at the middle of all that. And food justice is really shared access and shared responsibility to good, clean food. Um, so we work with folks, um, young people who've grown up with limited incomes, families with limited incomes, and help give them the resources and the encouragement and the opportunity to learn to grow their own food and to become um, champions for their own health and advocates for things that they care about, particularly around the food system. Okay, so nutrition, access, and cost are parts of food access yeah. and food justice. Yes. How does that take place and how is that applied to Thurston County? Great question. So in Thurston County, we are comparatively a pretty healthy county uh, across the state of Washington and, and certainly across the nation. Um, but there are still places that um, there's limited access to fresh foods, um, fresh foods in particular. Um, there are a handful of small food deserts, is what they're called, when you really have to um, be able to use private transportation or, or travel for greater distances to get fresh food. Um, that's usually called a food desert. There are pockets of food deserts in Thurston County, some in rural areas and some in some of the urban areas, in particular out in Lacey, there's a handful of spots. Um, and so giving folks access to growing in their own backyard and mitigating that food desert on their own, um, giving folks opportunity to grow food at schools, um, even at larger scales than school gardens so that they can um, help transform the food that's available in the school district. Um, we've been working with the food bank and with senior services of South Sound to help create opportunities for folks to bring fresh food into places where um, it's just more expensive. There was a Harvard study done a couple years ago and to eat a, a, f a fresh food diet with lots of fruits and vegetables that aren't canned or highly processed, uh, it costs about one and a half times what it would cost to eat processed foods. Um, and so usually it's about access and it's about affordability that makes it um, available to people. And how, how does Grub differ from a community garden? So we really think of ourselves kind of as a community farm. and so. Uh, there are a variety of different models of community gardens, and we've had a part to play in some of them. We had the opportunity to help uh, start the Sunrise Park, um, the Sunrise Community Garden at the Sunrise Park in West Olympia, um, which is the first community garden uh, on City of Olympia property or, or Parks pro property a few years ago. Um, so we helped them start that, but then we um, transitioned out and the city runs that on their own. We have a two acre urban farm in West Olympia and it's a place that we use for our alternative high school program for Grub School. So students growing food there, 
We have weekly volunteer days. We also have a lot of service groups and even businesses that come and use um, weeding and, and learning and growing together as uh, team building, which is really fun. Um, so we structure it in a different way that we um, grow the food, we send food home with volunteers, um, but you don't get your own kind of plot. And, and so some community gardens, you sign up and you have like this raised bed is mine and I need to champion mm -hmm. it on my own. And, you may or may not have access to a mentor or education about that garden, um, though I know that our, our Parks Department does a great gardening series to help with that. Um, then there are other community gardens that everyone grows something together and you all get some equal share of what's harvested. Um, we really manage it as a chance for students to grow as part of their education. Uh, and then we facilitate the distribution of food to um, the senior center, the food bank, our students take home food every week, our volunteers take home food when they're there for harvest. We sell um, a little bit of our food through CSA shares or community supported agriculture and so on. And then the other side of our, our work, the, the Victory Garden Project as we're calling it this year, is where instead of um, folks coming to some shared community space, we reduce the barriers and, the, and bring the garden home. And so we build a garden at people's homes, um, anywhere from 50 to 100 gardens every year for families with limited incomes throughout Thurston County. So we're actually wrapping up the last of our 50 plus gardens this week, um, bringing it to folks' house. That's fantastic. Well, how about we take a look at what Grub does in person? So hello, my name's Katie Rains and I'm the executive director of Grub. So we're here at the Grub Farmhouse in West Olympia, and we're gonna take a stroll over our two acre farm and show you around. Since before it was Grub, since 1993, um, there was the Kitchen Garden Project. And over the last 24 seasons, um, we've built about um, just under 3,000 gardens for family members in our community with limited incomes. Um, so I'll take you around front now actually and show you the um, Victory Garden Project demonstration bed. Um, these are pretty weedy right now, but Normally, this would be what the families receive for a backyard garden. So it's three four by eight beds with a big pea trellis that um, also is great for morning glory, as you can see here. It takes about two and a half hours. We hammer together the frames. We bring a couple yards of fresh soil from Great Western Supply. We leave them with plant starts and some seeds and a growing guide. The funny part is a lot of people drive by and they think that this is the farm. Um, and this is about 300 square feet of growing space. So I'll take you to the actual farm now. Uh, and you can see what we've really got going on back there. We think of ourselves as a community farm and we invite folks to come check it out any old time. Um, but we ask that you do close the gate because the deer really love to nibble on all of the fresh goods that we grow. So we've had a variety of partnerships that have made this whole site possible. This land used to be owned by Bonnie Turner and her family and we had the chance to buy it in 2009, which is when we built the farmhouse. This was her garage and it's all that remains of her old property. It's now our walk-in cooler where folks can come and pick up CSA shares. Um, everyone will do the harvest together, they'll wash the produce together, and then we'll go through and put everything into each of the CSA boxes, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture. So you can buy a share at the beginning of the year, and then you get fresh produce every week for the growing season. Now we do a little bit of rainwater collection for tool washing, particularly. This mural here uh, was uh, painted in 2004 when we hosted the National Rooted in Community Youth Leadership Summit. And it's really an opportunity for young people in programs like ours um, to recognize themselves as part of something bigger, as part of a movement that's connecting youth with leadership, um, with becoming champions for a better food system for everyone. I'll show you what's growing so far. Um, and I credit our farm manager, Heather. Um, both our farm manager and main farm assistant are female farmers, which is kind of a cool movement these days. So here's our farm. As you can see, some of it's just barely been planted and tilled. We've got a lot of brassicas going here, some kale, some collards, some squash. We call this the Taj Mahal. It's a little bit taller than we anticipated. Um, and so it's got that kind of glorious arcing thing, but it's one of the spaces that feels like forever summer. A lot of nice salad greens going so far. We do have um, nine chickens here on the farm. They love roaming wild and helping get all the, the grubs and pests out of the garden for us. So it's a sunny day and there's lots to forage today. So they're going, um, they're, they're going full swing right now. Um, I heard from the Beekeepers Association that fewer than half the hives, I don't know if they've released the exact number, but to their knowledge, fewer than half the hives in Thurston County made it through the winter. Um, so really being a friend to pollinators 
is important work right now, planting bee-friendly plants and avoiding chemicals. So the tomatoes are brand new. The hot crops are just going in, tomatoes and cucumbers. We call this the Hilton. We've got an assortment of carrots and beets and kale, lettuce, mustard greens. Plenty of weeds too. The garden is never finished. So we call this our little nature trail. And about four years ago, an Eagle Scout made this little bridge for us um, over the seasonal creek. This is another volunteer-made project, so we call this the Community Seed Shed. Um, so inside is seed storage, because we have grown a lot the last few years and started running out of space. Um, but this is a beautiful mural that one of our volunteers did. So the whole thing was constructed by volunteers. Got this beautiful seed mural. And then um, we have a team of volunteers who maintain this, but these are just free seeds. We get a lot of seeds donated. Um, Ed Hume is particularly generous with us, but so many others um, give us seeds. Uh, farmland that has been used by community members and by Grubbs founders since the mid-90s, since 1996, um, to connect people with their food. We were able to buy it, and now it's in a 99-year lease and owned by the Farmland Trust. So um, as Olympia is developing so quickly, this urban lot um, could have been uh, prime real estate for development, for new housing development, potentially even apartments one day. So for now, um, in this sanctuary of all these trees, um, this, this property is secure. So that's basically the farm. We checked out the play fields, the demonstration gardens, the farm itself, and our nature trail. We're back here at the farmhouse. So thanks for your time today. Thanks for checking out Grub. If you ever want to come see it for yourself, it is open to the community. So just come on by and make sure to close the gate behind you so you don't let the deer in. Um, have a great growing season and thanks for stopping by. So that looked fantastic. Tell us where your food goes. We're not a certified organic farm. I'll start with that. Because we're so small and because we really focus on education, um, we've just gone the route of sustainable agriculture. So all of our practices are aligned with the organic standard. Um, so we right now have adopted a model of really calling it a community farm. So by that we mean that we want to make sure that the people who have a stake in growing the food um, and who have need for the food are the ones who have a chance to eat the food. Um, in the past, we've tried, you know, as a nonprofit, you have to find ways to raise revenue, but unfortunately, farming is not super lucrative anyway. Um, but we realized that for our mission, uh, we wanted to get that food into the hands of folks who needed it. So um, our students, so we have a summer program, an employment training program. Our students take home food every week. Um, they're out on the farm some 20 plus hours a week, and they get to take home what we call a youth share. Um, then they also actually have a market stand in the, on Wednesdays from 3 to 6, and so that's like job training for our students. They're learning some basic customer service. For many of our students, it's their first job ever, um, and community can come and purchase food. Um, and folks who do stop by might see some of our newest partners. Um, this summer, we're piloting a partnership called Dedicated Intergenerational Gardeners with the Senior Services of South Sound. And we are providing 20 free senior shares for folks who have limited incomes and who are food insecure, but are not homebound. So we've got elders in our community who are gonna be coming by that market stand and or um, picking up their shares at the senior center downtown. Um, and then we also sell some of our food just to the public at the market and through community supported agriculture shares. Well, it sounds like you have a lot to brag about. Can you tell us more about some of your recent accomplishments? Yeah, um, it's been a really dynamic last five years at Grubb, and, and so I didn't mention this earlier, but we've been around since 2001. Two of our projects um, were founded in 93 and 96, respectively, and when they came together, Grubb was born. Um, in the last five years, we launched the Grubb School program. Um, we used to be just an after-school program, uh, and we were contacted by Matt Grant at Olympia High School and he said, I wanna bring this into the schools. I'm seeing incredible transformations in my students and I want more of my students to have access. And so we did a two year pilot with Olympia High School and helped them launch their own farm that's called uh, the Freedom Farmers Program. And one of our founders uh, moved on, Blue moved on to Olympia High School to teach that program there. Um, embedding our work in the school district and creating opportunity for more students um, and more young people that's one of our greatest accomplishments, but then we had a chance to hit the reset button and do it again with Capitol High School. 
Uh, last year, we had the opportunity, one of our other founders, Kim, who's now our director of youth programs, she helped start the Tumwater Fresh Farm alongside uh, one of our alumni, Mallory, who's been serving as the um, a paraeducator and now this summer will lead the program. So one of kind of our proudest pieces is that there are now three high schools or three um, sites in Thurston County that are serving high school students. And there's rumor that maybe Tanino is interested in exploring a partnership next. Um, we, a couple years ago, received a significant gift and had an opportunity to pay off our farm. So I mentioned it in the, on the farm tour, but we basically have three acres of land, um, including our classroom and urban farmhouse. We're planning to build a second classroom on the land. Uh, and then this beautiful farmland that's just in perpetuity farmland, whether or not it's always leased to grub, if we make it the rest of our 98-year lease, it will be used to grow food. That's Forever. fantastic. Yeah, that's, that's pretty fantastic. Cool. So, how can the community get more involved in Grub if they're not yet purchasing a CSA or going down to the store to um, buy some vegetables? How might someone get started? What paths to participation are there? That's great. Uh, there are a lot of ways to connect with our work. Um, volunteering is huge for us. We have 16 staff, but it takes a lot to grow 10,000 or more pounds of food every year. Uh, it takes a lot to um, help cook meals, to share with our community, and to share with our students. So we have a lot of paths to volunteering. That could look like farm work. That could look like folks who have photography skills or even who have tech skills come and help us out. Um, this weekend, we're celebrating our community seed shed. So we have free seeds available, and that's a resource that folks can connect with, too. Um, it's available on our farm. The farm is not locked. So there's a community seed shed, and we keep it stocked with seeds that have been donated. So anyone who wants to grow food and needs some seed access can come by. The whole seed shed was built by volunteers. So many structures on our property were. Uh, we have a program called the Victory Farmers, which is where we prioritize um, creating opportunities for veterans to put their powerful skills to work um, in leading garden builds for families with limited incomes, growing food for the community. Um, they built the fence on our farm, so some of the really like technical and construction skills, we've had a, a fabulous chance for folks to connect that way. Um, certainly donating, of course, we always welcome that. We're a community nonprofit, and this year, uh, we're trying to get 100 more folks who join us as monthly sustainers, so making some small contribution or something that fits in their budget. Um, we do also have a great workshop series. We haven't announced the summer series yet, but we've had partnerships with Olympia Mycelial Network and um, Elise Crone, who's doing work with us as a uh, herbalist and community educator. She does a lot of curriculum around wild food and medicine. One of our Gardner alumni is doing, um, well, two actually. One is teaching a cooking class, a cooking series, and another is doing a little bit more about plant medicine uh, that you can grow in your garden and turn into useful products at home. So if you want to have education, if you want to lend skills, if you need resources, we've got a little bit of everything. That sounds fantastic. So you mentioned the seed shed and access to that this weekend and mm -hmm. also these workshops. What other events or activities do you have coming up that you'd like to share? Well, uh, in September, we've got a community farm day. It's September 10th. It's a really low barrier. Uh, most days, because we are a school site, you have to have a background check on file to come to the farm. Um, but on Saturday, the 10th of September, it's just an open farm day, and anybody can come out from 10 to 2, get your hands dirty, and then we'll have a big shared meal together on the farm. Um, we also have uh, one of our fun community events. We have a carnival at Grub every summer to really share the beauty of the farm with the community. It's um, a free donation-based event. That is Thursday, August 3rd. And it'll be in the evening. We've got a magic show and face painters <laughs> and a dunk tank that we get from the uh, Association of Firefighters. So it's a good time and just a chance for folks to come and be together and, and celebrate summer, really. Great, thank you. Is there anything else you want to add about Grub or maybe share a personal anecdote about why your work at Grub is valuable and yeah, yeah. satisfying? Um, one of the things that I often hear is that folks are a little bit confused about what we do. Are we like an FFA program? Are we breeding new farmers? Or you know, what's going to happen there? And, and really what we do is help people access their own leadership skills and have a sense of community and have the peer support that they need to find their voice and follow their passion. Um, some of the things that have been most inspiring to me in our work, we had a high school student 
uh, a number of years ago who he had gotten bullied a lot. And at a certain point, he started to bully um, kind of in response or in retaliation. Um, one of the reasons he was bullied is because his hygiene wasn't always up to par, but what people didn't know is that he was living in his vehicle um, with his mom. And um, after a year in our program, um, with the opportunity to connect with 25 other students and for folks to uh, develop communication skills, to build empathy, uh, and to cultivate their ability to connect across differences and to see that as a strength, um, he felt like he had the support that he needed to offer to lead an assembly for his high school about bullying and to share his experience in a really powerful and vulnerable way um, to help others and to help people realize they're not alone. Um, so, so that's one side of it. Um, a few years ago when we started the Victory Farm, we had a, a veteran who um, contacted me. His name was Mark and he's like, I've got, I'm having a hard time. I'm looking for a chance to help a nonprofit and put my skills to work for a little while. They always tell me to get a job. They tell me to go to school. I just can't do that right now, but mm -hmm. I can help. And so we came into our work. The first meeting that I went to with him, uh, it was a small group of people, 30 people, and he, he, we all needed to introduce ourselves. And when it got to him, he, he was like, Katie, I, like, I need you to do it for me. And so I introduced him to this small group of folks who were all in veteran services. They were all totally there for him. Um, and not six months later, he was our keynote speaker at our annual <laughs> Harvest Soiree. Brought, it was about 200 people and brought 90% of the room to tears, full standing ovation, and just found his voice and um, has gone on to pursue his passion and started to, to figure out really what he wants to bring into this world. And so people finding their purpose and feeling the support they need to, to run with it, that's what we do and that's what feels really good. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing some of the unexpected magic that can come from gardening. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Katie. Thank you so much for having me. It was my pleasure. So that is all that we have for you. You can see Mission Nonprofit on Channel 77 on Sundays at 4.30 p.m., Tuesdays at 7 p.m., Thursdays at 7.30 p.m., and Saturdays at 6.30 p.m. You can also catch us online at tcmedia.org. See you next time.